Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create immersive space in Vision OS where you can add virtual objects like cubes and circles and spheres using Reality Kit. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create my Vision OS project. So select Vision OS app next. And over here, you can provide your name for the project. Now, other settings that you have, initial scene, immersive space, we're just going to leave it as it is right now. Okay. Although you can change it, but we, I will show you that you can still create an immersive space just by adding a couple of keys in info.plist file. So don't worry too much about it. So I'm going to say Vision OS box. Let's do next. And desktop is perfectly fine, so let's go ahead and create it on the desktop. Now, the first thing, since we didn't really change anything, we didn't really made it an immersive space. So the first thing you notice is that you are looking at a Swift UI window that is created. Now, if we go to the Vision OS app, you can see it's a window group and it shows you a content view, which is basically a Swift UI view. All right. Now, in this case, we don't really want a Swift UI view. We want an immersive experience. So we want kind of like unbounded space where we can just throw stuff. We can just play stuff and all of that fun stuff. All right. So how can we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell our application that the default scene is actually an immersive space. So let's go to the info and open up this file. And you can see currently it's set up to be as window application session role. We're going to change that to be immersive space application session role. This is important. If you don't do that, then your app is not going to work. Now we're going to go back to the Vision OS box app. And this is our kind of like the entry point of our application. And over here, instead of the window group, which actually creates windows, we can remove all of this stuff and we can create an immersive experience by using immersive space. Inside the immersive space, we can return some sort of a view. This can be any view that you have. So I'm just going to go ahead and say content view. Let's go ahead and build it. Now, once we build it, we are now rendering this content view inside the immersive space. If you go to the actual content view, you can see that nothing really has changed. If you want to update your previews, you can also use immersive space over here. And this is, of course, only for the previews. So you can see what exactly is going on on the right hand side where the previews are displayed. Now, if you do that, you can already see that there is a problem. It says static method bill expression requires that the immersive space view content conform to view. So we need to do something to fix this problem. One of the things that we can look into is replacing all of this stuff like the V stack with a reality view. A reality view is used to create reality kit applications. But you can see that still it's kind of complaining that something has happened and it's just not able to produce that output. Okay, great. So now we are inside this immersive style and you can see that we are not really rendering anything. We're in a museum, but it doesn't really render anything right now. We can start simple by adding some sort of a box or a cube. So I'm going to say box mesh. The first thing we're going to create will be the box mesh. So let's go ahead and create something. And you can see that the actual Xcode previews is just so fast. As soon as I type something, it just 
kind of say that, hey, you got to do something about it. Okay, so let's call it box mesh equals to mesh resource. And then we can generate it from the box with the size. And these sizes are in meters. So that's why I'm just going to say 0 0.3 meters, which is actually pretty good size. Next, we're going to say material. And we can use the material. Uh, we can use a simple material over here simple material with a particular color let's go with the red color and metallic true if we do metallic true then it means that it's going to be a little bit more reflective the next thing we can do is to actually create our box so let's go ahead and create a box this will be a model entity and it will be based on the mesh that we're going to provide which will be the box mesh and the material array, which in this case, we can simply pass in the material. But if you have different materials, you since it's an array, you can pass in different materials also. Final thing that we want to do is we want to add this particular box, which is an entity to our content. And whenever we add that, that particular content gets displayed. So let's go ahead and save it. And we will have to move around a little bit. Oops, I think that's the problem with moving around. Let's click on that. Okay, do we see the box? It's right there. Awesome, right? We can actually move around over here. We can see the box. It's getting displayed. Great. It looks pretty good. I mean, the box is definitely getting displayed over here. But one of the things you will note is that the box is displayed but there's like a window where the box is coming from so that kind of looks weird i mean we can go and look at the box a little bit closer but it looks really weird coming out of this window thing so how can we make sure that we don't have this window being displayed over here and will this have the same experience if I actually run it on the simulator. So let me go ahead and run it on the simulator. So we will have a better idea of how it will actually look like. Now the simulator can take a little bit of time to launch. And here we go. You can see the simulator is trying to start up. Once the simulator is started, and there we go, I think it's booting itself. The previews are great, by the way, because you can definitely tell what's going on immediately. Okay. Okay. I don't really see any box anywhere right now. Okay. Let's walk around a little bit. Maybe it did added the box somewhere. Oh, there is the box. Hmm. That's weird because this particular box on the simulator doesn't really have any window. See that? It's on its own, which actually looks really nice. But the one that we are looking at in our preview, which is this one, does have some weird window behind it. So how can we make sure that in our preview, it also appears just like in our really nice simulator? So let's go ahead and see how we can achieve that. So everyone, I did try several different combinations for it to work, but unfortunately I couldn't got it to work. Like it always display this weird window and you can see that the box or the cube is coming out of the window. Uh, what I thought is that I can simply go ahead and wrap this with the immersive space. And if you look at the immersive space, there are a lot of different things it returns. But the one that I'm interested in returning is the one which returns V, which is probably the view. And I thought I can just wrap it up and I can say content view and that would be it. But it doesn't look like this is happy about it. It's complaining, so it's not going to work. But if it works on your actual simulator, not the previous, then that is good enough. All right. If you do have your Vision Pro device, you can definitely try to run this app on the Vision Pro device. You may have to just select the actual Vision Pro device from over here, and then you can run it, okay? So this is pretty cool. 
I mean, we are at least able to display something. Now, how can we add gestures to it? Like, what if I just want to drag this box somewhere? And for these examples, you know, it would be much nicer that we will use the actual simulator so that we can only see the box and not those windows, okay? Now, in order to drag the box, we have to go ahead and implement the gesture. So let's handle the gesture. And I'm going to go ahead and handle. There are many different kinds of gesture, like a tab gesture and swipe gestures and all these kind of things. But we're going to be using the drag gesture, which, as you can imagine, it, it works with dragging. And on the drag gesture, we have to provide the targeted to entity. So targeted to entity is basically means that which entity are you targeting for this drag gesture? Well, the problem is that the entity is box, but it's only available, well, inside this closure. So we have to do something with the box so it's we can pass it over here. If I pass the box over here, as you can imagine, there is no such thing as a box and it cannot really find the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on the top over here and create the box as a private var property. We'll just call it box. That's fine. And it's going to be a model entity. And we'll just initialize it like this. And later on, we can remove on line number 22, the let part. So now that we have defined the box on line number 14 as kind of like the private property, we can access it throughout our content view. Next, we have to say on changed. On change simply means that when you're dragging, you know, when you're dragging, the values are changing. We are going to get the value of the drag. And now we can go ahead and fix the box position. So fix the box position, we'll get the value, dot convert, now, the reason that we have to do conversion over here is because when you are moving the actual dragging, the value will be in the space, like not the actual space, like an immersive space, but more like a screen 2D space, all right? And that's why we are converting it from value dot location 3D from the local and the local coordinate system of the current view, which will be X and Y, only two, two ways, and to the reality coordinate system. So whatever the entity's parent is, that will be the reality coordinate system. Let's go ahead and build it. And let's go ahead and run the application. And I'm gonna run it on the simulator now because we know that on the simulator, it looks a little bit nicer. Okay, let's see. Maybe I have to move up a little bit to a level. Okay, let's first look around. Where is the box? I don't even see the box right now. Oh, there's a box. I think I'm flying or some reason. Uh, you know, you can already tell that I don't really play those 3D games. It's been a while. So there we go. Just going to land a little bit. Probably this location would be okay. Okay, can I hold the box now? Hmm, nothing really going on. Trying to drag the box, trying to hold the box by just clicking on it and holding on it, but it doesn't move. This means that we are definitely, we have something that is missing, all right? So on the box itself, we have to add a couple of different components. Let's go ahead and add a component which allows our box to receive the events. And that component is called the input target component. And you can see that it has allowed targets also over here. So we can go ahead and create that. And it's a direct, which basically means that uh, it this particular direct target option, and you have also indirect by the way over here. All right. So let's check out the documentation. It says all forms of input that target the content using an indirect targeting mechanism. And the direct means all forms of input 
that target content by querying the proximity 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 from the input device can't even say proximity okay so we're going to do indirect because we're kind of like touching the device i mean touching the box right so we're just going to use that let's see if that is enough or not you know always try to add one property one component one something and then try to see if it works or not okay first we have to find our box oh there is a the box Hmm, doesn't look like that this was enough. It's still not really moving. Interesting. So what other properties do we have to set over here? I mean, does, a, does it have to be some sort of a physics component? Hmm, well, let's add another property over here. We're going to call this property, this is called the Generate Collision Shapes. And passing false over here, we'll, we'll pass true or and false, and we'll see that if that kind of works. But let's go ahead and run this. Oh, yes, it's working. There we go. You can see that I can drag the box. One thing I find a little bit interesting is that the box doesn't really have any shadow associated with it, which is kind of weird right i mean everything has a shadow and there's a light coming in from somewhere from i think behind me or somewhere there we go but the box is not really drawing any shadows but at least we can drag it i mean that's always good let's see if we can figure out how to do the shadows so box dot components dot set and one of the components that you can set is called the grounding shadow component and we can cast it to true which basically means that you should cast a shadow let's see if that works in the simulator and if it actually casts the shadows or not i'm gonna wait for the box oh yes see the shadow this is amazing right i mean now this is a this is pretty cool i really like it if you go over here you can see a little bit of a shadow over here also Oops, I think I clicked on something wrong over here. All right, there we go. And we put the box on the floor. And we learn about the dragging. And we learn about how to add a virtual object. This is great. This is amazing. All right. So this is a definitely a great start for learning how to use Vision OS to create application for Vision Pro. Now, one thing I would like to mention is if you are interested in learning about Reality Kit, because you can already see there's a lot of Reality Kit stuff going on over here, right? This is all Reality Kit. So if you are interested in learning about Reality Kit, I have a brand new workshop that I am hosting. If you go to the workshop, if you go to azamsharp.school if you click on the workshop and this workshop will be introduction to reality kit it's on february 24th 11 a.m to 2 p.m and it will be very hands-on i mean it won't be any slides or anything i'll show you all the code and we'll work on some apps together i'll give you some activities that you can work on i mean it's going to be really amazing workshop and we're going to cover the fundamental, we're going to cover the gestures, we're going to cover the models and physics. And you can register for the workshop on azamsharp.school. All right. So that is it. Uh, also, you can check out my courses. Simply go to azamsharp.school. And if you scroll down, you can see all of these different courses that I have. MVVM. I also have a course on Reality Kit. Let's find that out. Yeah, it's right here. It's it's actually on sale right now, so hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much, and stay tuned for more.